Byron Murphy is my top ranked defensive tackle in the 2024 draft class. He's my 14th ranked player overall. As of February 4th, when I'm recording this, I'm actually as high on Byron Murphy as any draft board that's on the internet. He's currently 31st on the consensus board. I do expect that to rise as we get closer to the draft, but I can confidently say I'm a lot higher on Byron Murphy than most people. He's listed at six foot one, 308 pounds. Those are school measurements, so I don't put a whole lot of stock into that. I would classify him as somewhat of an undersized defensive tackle, not tiny, but he's a three technique only. He's an elite athlete. He's got as explosive of a first step as any defensive tackle in this class. And he's so quick moving laterally, crossing the blocker's face, shifting from gap to gap. The acceleration and the lateral quickness, that's part of what makes him such an effective pass rusher. He's able to cross the blocker's face, attack either shoulder and get upfield and pressure the quarterback. He led defensive lineman last year with a 20.1% pass rush win rate. He had 45 pressures and six sacks. He does need to become a better finisher. There were a ton of missed sack opportunities on tape. You probably saw the play in the semifinal against Washington where he gets into the backfield instantly, but Michael Penix is able to sidestep the pressure. For a defensive tackle, he's got a lot of different pass rushing moves at his disposal. His go-to move is the club rip where you're striking the shoulder and then ripping underneath. That's probably the most common hand move that you'll see with defensive tackles at any level of football and it results in a lot of quick wins. On play actions and passes where he's just later getting into his move, he has an effective push-pull. He'll be stalemated to the block, and then he just quickly transitions into that push-pull, sends the blocker flying forward, and then he's got the closing speed to get upfield quickly. Like I said, doesn't always have the change of direction to finish those sacks, but he's someone that's gonna consistently pressure the quarterback at least. And then he has a consistent bull rush, does a great job translating that first step into a lot of hand pop on initial contact, creating knockback, and then he drives his legs throughout the rep, gets low pad level, walks the blocker back into the pocket. Really the only issue I have with him as a pass rusher is that if he doesn't win early and he's going up against a blocker that has controlled accurate hand placement, they can latch onto his jersey and kind of toss him aside and basically end the play for him. I saw that happen two or three times on tape. Not a major concern. It's just kind of something that comes with the territory of being an undersized pure three technique. As a run defender, I think think he was very up and down. He was able to consistently win against single blocks. He has quick reaction time off the snap, gets his hands inside, establishes first contact, and he's able to lock out single blocks. If a run blocker is leaning forward into contact, he's able to quickly transition into a swim move and get past them. Against reach blocks on outside zone, he's good at stacking the block initially, raising the blocker's pad level, and then flowing laterally with the run, keeping his play side hand free, and then working himself in position and making the tackle and he's a consistent high effort high motor player you pair that with his elite speed he's able to chase down runs from the backside impact screen passes but against double teams especially it was a lot more of a mixed bag he uses that knee drop technique where his knees on the ground to sustain the block and then once one of the blockers climbs he bounces back onto his feet he had a lot of success with that but it's pretty much his only method of anchoring against a double team if he tries to stay on his feet and just plant his back leg leg and anchor, he gets moved back consistently. You see a lot of plays where he's either getting put on his back or displaced five to seven yards off the line of scrimmage. So out of everything that we've talked about, that's really my biggest concern with Byron Murphy is having the size and play strength to hold up in the run game. But as a pass rusher, I think he has a high floor and a high ceiling and I'm comfortable taking him in the top 15 picks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL draft prospects that you'd like me to cover. And if you want to see my full draft board as an interactive filterable table, I've got that up at a to zsports.com. The link to that is in the description.